Good morning, church. Welcome to GBC Sunday service and also to those of you online, a very warm welcome to you also. How are you feeling? Good, happy, excited, in anticipation to honour God and to worship Him? Very good. Yeah, for those of you online, I assume you're saying yes to. Yeah, I want to encourage you this morning with a verse. Um, and this is to encourage you from Zephaniah 3 verse 17. The Lord your God is in your midst. Amen? A mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by His love. And He will exalt over you with loud singing. Amen? Let's give God a clap of praise. Yeah. He is good and He is faithful. Let's be ready to worship Him, allow Him to speak to us because today is the day the Lord has made. Amen? Let me pass this time to the worship team. Thank you. Hallelujah. Let's rise. Rise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. So good morning, GBC. And good morning to all who is worshipping with us online. And once again, it's such a privilege to approach the throne of grace, giving God the highest honour and praise, lifting up a shout unto the rock of our salvation, and together with one voice, we describe and we proclaim His name. I know this season may be tough for many, but... You know, we were reminded, you know, surely goodness and mercy follow us all the days of my life. Amen. That's right. It, you know, this verse has been following us, especially me, for the whole week, you know. Last week was the same, uh, 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 the worship team led us, you know. And truly, you know, God's word remained in us. As if we abide in Him, it remains and becomes like a, spring, a, a streams of living water. Amen. Do you agree with me? Yes, hallelujah. So this morning, you know, you know, as I meditate on this, is this verse, uh, I just felt there's an overflow. And there's an overflow. And every time when we praise Him, there's an overflow of, of the Lord's presence and the Lord's goodness and His blessing. Okay, God says He loves you. He loves me. And, and all, not, not, not some, not most, not nearly, but all, and all, the days of our lives. Amen. Yes, yes, amen. Even in, in every season, His faithfulness has, has, you know, been by our side and we are the evidence of His grace and mercy. So thank you, Lord. We are not going to hold back, you know, we, even the fact that we are standing here is, is the evidence of His grace, His mercy, His love and His protection upon us, oh God. Lord, come on, give God a clap, offering unto Him. As we gather as one body in person, there is power, there is unity, there is, there is a resurrect, re resonate of praise and worship that is going to rise up to heaven. So let us not hold back, okay? Let's not hold back and press further into His courts with thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen. Hallelujah. Here we go. Pass it over to Simon. Okay, come on church. We sang this song last week. Come on, let's put our hands together. Sing, oh Lord. Oh Lord, you're my shepherd. You make me lie in fields of green. That's right. You lead me by the still waters. You restore righteousness to me. Though I walk, though I walk to the valley, I will hear no evil thing. For you are with me, and you comfort me. Oh, we sing that verse one more time. Oh Lord, you're my shepherd. Oh Lord, you're my shepherd. You make me lie in fields of green. Yes, you lay me by the still waters. You restore righteousness to me. Thank you. Surely goodness, love, and mercy will follow. 
deserve our highest praise. Amen. Thank you, God, for your faithfulness. Hallelujah. Truly, when we praise, oh God, Lord, when we sing our song of praise unto you, God, it is a weapon, oh God. Hallelujah. That conquers every darkness. And that's every time when we have anxiety. And every, especially right now, we're living in fears and doubts, Lord. We're going to lift up our praise even more higher. Amen, church? You know, when every time you're afraid, I'm telling it to myself too. I'm going to start praising Him. It has to start with praise. Even if you do not know how, just start one step at a time. All right? Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Come on. Let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let's praise the rise. Let's sing us in the darkness, changes everything. We sing with all we are, we claim your victory. Let it rise. The giant's walls When fear cannot survive When we praise you The God of great truths On our side Amen. Forever lifting high With all creation Cry out we praise you Oh We praise you Oh Let faith Let faith be a song that Jesus. No more, no more uh, um, brokenness too. Everything will be renewed when we praise Him. No more sickness. No more pain. As we lift up the name of Jesus, all this will be restored in the name of the Almighty Lord. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. Amen. Let's declare it out, church. This is what living looks like This is what freedom feels like This is what heaven sounds like We praise you, we praise you This is what living 
looks like This is what freedom feels like This is what heaven sounds like We praise you, we praise you Hallelujah This is what heaven looks like This is what freedom feels like This is what heaven sounds like We praise you, we praise you This is what living looks like This is what freedom feels like This is what heaven sounds like We praise you, we praise You see you break down every wall And watch the giants fall Praise Church. That's right. When in the presence of the Lord, of the Almighty God, when we praise Him, His glory is in our midst. We can't hold back our praise. We can't hold back our words. We just praise Him. We just lift up a shout of praise to the Lord, the King of Kings, the Almighty God. Amen. Hallelujah. The glory, glory. Yeah. I sing, I can't hold back my praise. Come on, let it out. I can hold back my praise. In other words, come on. I gotta let it out. I can hold back my praise. You sing. I gotta let it out. I can hold come back. My let us. You gotta what? Start the flow now. I can hold back my praise. I gotta let it out. I can hold back my praise. I gotta let it out. I can. the landscape for us totally God and today that we can come to meet with you as the corporate 
as corporately and, and as a body, God. We are the evidence of your goodness, your grace, your mercy. And Lord, we will continue to press into praise in times like this, oh God. You are our sound. Who have I in heaven but you? And you alone, Lord. Father God, thank you for your faithfulness upon each and every one of us. From our children, our parents, ourselves, our loved ones, our spouse. Lord, thank you. Thank you for every morning that we wake up, Lord, that we are healthy. Amen. Thank you, God, that every morning we wake up, that we are loved and we are blessed. That we have everything provided, food, a, a roof above our head, Lord. And all the wonderful things that you have been giving on this earth, Lord the wonderful beauty that envelops us as we go out into this world. I know now it's scary, but Lord, after these two years, God, we are not taking any of this for granted, even just to catch a glimpse of the sun, oh God. Truly, God, this is the gift from you, Lord, and that we should be ever thankful. Christ our Lord, to thee we raise. This is our sacrifice of praise.
Storm was more for good, for 
God, our Father in heaven, thank you for making us. Thank you for creating us to be in your image so that we can praise you, so that we can know you, we can feel your love, Lord. Thank you for your Son. Thank you that though we do not deserve it, you gave him up for us so that we can come into your presence and know that you are God, that we can come and know that there's salvation, redemption, much love, much hope, much peace. And thank you for the Spirit, Holy Spirit, that teaches us, counsels us, guides us. And Lord, that we will never be alone. So much comfort, Lord, in three in one. You are God, God from the beginning, God of the past, the present and the future. Lord, there's so much confidence as we stand here this morning, whether here in the sanctuary at home, knowing that, Lord, when we believe in you, Lord, you are with us. And that, Lord, there should be no fear, there's no condemnation, but, Lord, there is acceptance, love, protection, because we are your children. Thank you, Lord, that it's not because we chose you, but you chose us first to be your people, to bear fruit, to share the gospel. So Lord, as a church, may we live a life that honours you. May we go out and share the good news. May we, Lord, not be able to contain that goodness, but go out and keep praising you and giving you all the glory, all the honour that is due your name. Thank you. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, worship team. It was really a wonderful time of worship this morning. And I'm sure all of us enjoyed it. So, very good morning and welcome to our GBC Sunday service. And if this is your first time joining us, would you like to give us a wave so that we can acknowledge you? Anyone? Hi, welcome, welcome. And to those of you online who are new joining us for the first time, do leave a note on the chat so that we can get in touch with you. It's so nice to see all of you here and for those of you at home, welcome as well. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, um, so I'm here, Jo Ching, and I'm here to give you GBC News. Uh, our annual general, general meeting will be coming up on March 20th, 
So heads up to you, it's at 1pm after service on Sunday and all GBC members are welcome to attend. If you're not a GBC member and would like to join our AGM, you're more than welcome to do so as an observer. Okay? To continue with our Christian education series, there's two classes coming up. Part one and part two of Bible study resources and how to use it. I really encourage all of you to attend. Details will be on our GBC broadcast WhatsApp group. And then um, corporate prayer meeting. This Wednesday, we'll meet as usual on, at 8.30 via Zoom. Um, corporate prayer meeting has been very meaningful to me personally for the last two years because of COVID and all that. And we are able to pray with different, different people and to pray and intercede, not just for ourselves, but for the church and the nation. So I really encourage you to join us. Okay? For offering, we have been blessed with so much. Huh? Like what Jessica and the team were singing just now, we are truly, truly blessed. So to honour God with your tithes and offering, you can do that several ways. You're encouraged to do online transfer to our Maybank account. You can also transfer via Touch and Go, which is available on your online screen or outside the sanctuary. But if you prefer cash or check, do drop it in the box right in front of the sanctuary after the service. And lastly, to follow us on social media or to get more information about the church, do join us on Facebook, Instagram, or visit our website. You'll get to know our church, ministries, and see how you can get involved. Okay, thank you very much. Let me pass this time to Pastor Daniel, who will bring today's message. Thank you. Tess, good morning. Morning, church. How are you? Praise God. Come, let's pray, yeah? Father, we thank you for the exuberant worship that, that the team led, that we can be reminded that you are God. And with you, with us, Lord, we can walk without fear. We can live in the freedom that you have come to give us, Lord. We thank you that, God, you protect us, you shield us, you are everything to us, Lord. And so even now, as we look at your word, I pray that, Lord, you will open our hearts that we may listen and we may align our lives so that we can live meaningful, fruitful lives for you, O oh God, that we can really bring you glory. We thank you and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. In the early years of uh, our church getting involved in, in missions in Nepal, when we adopted the village uh, in Pokhara, near the region of Pokhara in Bamdi, the team would go to uh, Nepal once a year. Some, I think there was maybe once or twice, we went twice a year. And in, the, in those days, um, we would take a flight in from Kathmandu to Pokhara. And on the way out, we would take the bus back to take the scenic route. Those of you who were uh, the first few trippers, uh, eventually we changed uh, to flying both ways. But those of you who were there, uh, the first few trips, you would remember this. Uh, not this particular road, but on the way back, you would take a bus and the road is so narrow. So narrow that if you look down on the cliff, you know, you can literally see the bottom of the, 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 the ravine where you will see river. And sometimes, if you are lucky, you can see the carnage of uh, a bus that fell down some time ago, you know, and uh, it was quite interesting, quite scary. I know there are some other roads throughout the world uh, that are just as scary, but uh, this was very close because we were in the bus, and, uh, and so going on the journey was kind of scary. But guess what? What's more scary is when you meet the bus coming the other way. Now, who's going to give way, you know? And, and, and we have to find a, a corner somewhere where the, the other bus can move and i don't know what was the the agreement maybe the one going south was the one who had to go nearer the cliff the one going north maybe you can go to the nearer the the cliff um the side nearer the away from the edge and so it was scary and recently in our, our trip to I, I took a trip to yorang village 
and it was really my first time driving a four-wheel drive. Uh, and one wrong move, under wet conditions, you could also end up in a ravine. So it was stressful, but yet exhilarating. And I share this because many of us, we live our lives with very little margin, like the road that you can see on the picture. You know, so narrow that it takes just a little bit to throw you out of sync and everything becomes a wreck. You know, we squeeze too many things into our lives and we leave little room to maneuver and breathe. And all it takes is just something small and we are out of whack. You know, how many of us live like that? We squeeze so many things and, and actually it's dangerous to live like that. Just because, you know, a little bit of something can, can bring much problems into our lives. We, it can tip you out of balance. You, you end up having a lot of stress. Emotionally, you are in distress. Mentally, you are a mess. And it could lead also to hopelessness, helplessness, and and other related illnesses. And so we need margin in our life. And the only two things I can think of that we can afford to have no margin is we only need to worship one God. We can only worship one God. That one, we cannot have margin. Amen? Other things, we can have margin. The second thing, can you guess what's the second thing? We can only have one spouse. Amen? You cannot have any margin. Cannot have a girlfriend on the side or etc. No margin, okay? What happens when the margin is too tight? We become highly strung. And because we are rushing from one thing to another, we are, we are very tense people. Our relationship becomes strained because we are always you know, pressing for time. And, and if somebody's delayed slightly, then we will snap at the person. How many of you snap at somebody this morning on the way to church? I'm waiting for you. You're still doing something. Why you're not? I want to be in church already. Did you snap at somebody? I did. <laughs> yeah, because I want to be here early. I want to, do, I want to, to settle down, you know, and, and things, one thing lead to another. And it happens. It happens to the best of us, right? But we need to have margin in our life. Now, and that is just physical margins, right? Uh, having too much on our schedule. But what about, what if you're talking about spiritual margins? If we have thin spiritual margins, we can be very far from God and don't even know it. We can touch and go with God and don't even know it, right? So today, I just want to encourage us to take a look at, at how we live our lives and, and to examine how much margin we have in our lives and what we do with our margin. And of course, the basis of this comes from Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 to 11, where you know, God set the, set the law based on creation where God created and then He rested. And so let's read. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your sons or daughters nor your male or your female servants, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them. But he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath and made it holy. So Sabbath is a day of rest, and we need to rest from our work, except for pastors and church workers, because Sunday is our work day, and then we rest on Monday, Right? It's a time where we, we rest, we take time to breathe, to slow down. That's not all. Really, it is just to come back to rest in God, to thank God for all the things that He has given to us. He has blessed us with salvation, to renew our, our faith in Him as we reflect, as we sit down and reflect, Right? We renew our trust in Him because we are reminded that it's not in our own strength that we, we have this success or that success or we clinch this deal, that deal. No, we thank God. We take that time to just rest and reflect and pray and read God's Word and, 
and thank God for everything, the provision, the protection, the opportunities He gives us to minister to people. It's not by our own wisdom or our own cleverness or our strategies that work, but it is God. So in this rest time, we renew our hope and our strength in Him. Because some weeks, right, can be very heavy weeks, very uh, tough weeks, but when we rest, when we reflect, when we uh, set aside the time, we can be reminded through worship, through, through the preaching of God's Word, through your own meditation of Scriptures, we thank God that He holds us and He is the rock of our salvation, that when we, when we are with Him, everything will be fine. That though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, no harm will come to us. And that's the essence of, of, of our Sabbath, right? And there are many things that, uh, there are many things to do in God's kingdom. God's work is unending. Your work is also unending, right? We all have to earn a living. Um, you have to meet clients, do business. But if we don't make time and have margins, we are setting ourselves up for exhaustion, for disillusionment, and also doing things in our own strength because it is us wrestling with the things that we need to do on our schedule rather than resting and reflecting and praying and asking God for strength. And in uh, the New Testament in Mark chapter 2, verse 27, Jesus said, Sabbath is made for men and not man for Sabbath. So Sabbath is not a rule to say you should not be productive, you should stop working, etc. But really it's meant for us to help us. It's meant for our own good to rest, to be reminded that God is the source of all things and we can trust Him more. So, we need to set aside a time. Sunday is the day for us, right, to worship God with the family of God. We need to hear God's word together to reflect on His faithfulness, give thanks for the salvation He gives, blessings, the favour, and reflect on our lives the past week and see if we need to make any necessary uh, alignment of our life through prayer so that we can please God with our lives. You know, what are some of the stealers of margins? I won't go into detail, but uh, this is a list. You may have more. But workaholism, perfectionism, addiction, laziness, procrastination are things that can steal our margin. I just want you to be aware that you, you, we all are success, uh, can fall into this easily. You know, some of us have inclinations to work and we find re it rewarding to work and work and work and work and we leave little margin for God, for our family, for other things, for our health. And so we have to be careful and just watch out for this list because they will steal our margin, they will rob us. Addiction is one thing, you know, addiction to games, to, to, to watching things on our phone, playing games, all these can be addictions, can steal our margin of having really rest, being restful, being reflective, being prayerful, reading the Bible, praying, spending time with God. So we need to be watchful. All right, moving on. How do we build margins? So we, we, we know that margins are important, but margins don't simply appear. They need to be factored into our life. While weekly work and rest days are already in place, how many of us really observe that and take that time to worship God, to, to be still and rest, you know? And sometimes, especially in this COVID season, work from home can, be, can really uh, take a lot of our margins. Time for our family uh, can, can, can steal, uh, or rather, time from our family is taken away because we have to work from home and because it's so easy to answer calls, to meet people, etc., etc. So we have to be really be careful. Well, uh, allow me to suggest a few things to you. One is to plan your margins. Margin don't happen on its own. We need to manage our schedules and manage it, including margins in. There are times when we can't help the fact that certain emergencies crop up, that we have to deal with them, right? Suddenly your car breaks down, you, you know, or suddenly uh, somebody is tested positive, you, you have to make arrangements to help them, etc., etc. But if we are always on a tight schedule, we will miss opportunities. 
So we need to, to manage, and we also need to manage our kids' schedules so that they have time to rest, to enjoy their childhood, to follow us, to visit our friends, or invite friends over for a meal so that we can share life, that we can share the gospel. You know, how we live our life, when we build margins into our life, we plan margins into our life, we are actually also training our children to have that time so that they can learn that lifestyle of having time to just be still, to reflect, to rest, rather than going from one appointment to another, rushing from here to there. And with the Penang traffic, especially during uh, school holidays, public holidays, it gets more stressful, right? How many of you post on your social media, don't come to Penang, go somewhere else? I'm sure some of you might have seen that. Yeah. So remember the, the parable of the, the, the Good Samaritan in Luke 10. You know, uh, there was a man who was robbed and beaten up and he was left lying on the road to die. Then a Levite and a priest passed by. Of course, there may be other reasons, but perhaps one of the reasons is because they were too busy. They were rushing to perform their duties. I have to go. I have to be at the temple. I have to, to meet somebody. And because their schedule was tight, they missed the opportunity to minister. And someone else who had a bit more loose time, free time, some margin, they were able to seize that opportunity. So my question for us is today, are we too busy that when God presents us with the real need, but because we are too busy, it passes us by? How many of you, as you drive through on the way to work, or on the way back from work, that you encountered a, an accident and you stopped and you actually went down to help. Many times we don't do that because, oh no, I'm late for my meeting, right? We need to be somewhere. But sometimes it is in those times that we can truly meet the need and be a blessing to somebody, you know? I think most of us, uh, myself included, when there's an accident, and we can't see the accident yet, but there's a jam, we get angry, right? What's going on? Why is it so late? And by the time we get there, we actually take a look and cause the traffic to slow down. And I hope none of us look at the car number plate and buy four numbers, four digit. Are our, 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 our plans flexible enough that we can change it when we hear something? has happened to a, a, a friend, we can make the time to call them. How are you? How are you doing? How can I help you? Visit them. You know, I know of someone who, who didn't have a packed schedule and was able... Oh, oh, sorry, I know of someone who had uh, a decent schedule, you know, not too tight, um, but she was able to change her plan just as she was driving home from work one day. She felt the Lord leading her to go and visit the friend. But in her mind, she had to go back to cook dinner for her family. But she reasoned to herself, this is God leading me. I need to, to make arrangements. I, she came. She went to, to see her friend. And she rang the doorbell numerous times. Nobody answered. And she wondered, why would God lead her to go to this house to ring the bell only for nobody to be at home? Maybe she got it wrong, right? But after a while, the door opened. She saw the curtain move and the door opened and the friend came out. Eventually, she, the friend invited her in. And to cut the long story short, the friend told her, if you didn't come today, I would have committed suicide. Because this lady was able to take time from her schedule. As she was rushing back to cook dinner for her family. Good to cook dinner for your family, right? good to take care of your household, but we need to have some room, some flexibility, so that we can respond to the things of God. And because this lady was obedient, the friend is still alive today. Praise God. So are we so busy, so intent on keeping our schedule that when God brings us an opportunity that we miss, I hope that we will Reconsider. The second thing is this, building, building margin. is 
You know, hearing God cannot be rushed. And I know we all fall into, many of us fall into this category where we read the Bible in the morning, we take some time, we read, and then we, we, we pray, we commit our day to God, and then just go. A lot of times, that can just be a cursory reading. And even for, for us people in ministry full-time, it's so easy for us to just read the Bible for other people, to prepare messages for your, and not read for ourselves, you know. So we all need to set aside a bigger margin so that we can spend time to read the Bible for ourselves, to hear God for ourselves. In John chapter 10, verse 27, Jesus said this, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. So obviously, there are many other verses that tell us that God speaks, God communicates with us through the Bible, through leading other people to connect with us, through the leading of the Holy Spirit impressing on our hearts, through circumstances, God speaks to us. But more often than not, because we don't spend enough time to be still, to let the cares of this world fade out, you know, we won't hear God's voice. We won't, be, we won't feel close to God, right? Many times, when you read the Word of God, what happens when you're doing your quiet time? Your phone rings, then you want to check your message. Or you remember that you haven't turned off the gas. How many of you experienced that? You, you wonder, oh, I wonder what we'll have for lunch. You know, our minds stray. And so it's, we really need to set aside that time, margin to just ah, slowly push away all these things and just spend time to focus on God. It is then and only then that we can hear God. Of course, God can speak to us Sometimes when we are driving, when we are doing something, God can drop something in your heart. But by and large, God will speak to us when we are calm, when we are quiet, when we don't have any distractions. And I often use this analogy, you know. Soldiers would never go on a mission without communication with HQ. Would you go to war? Imagine you're a soldier. Would you go to war without having communication with the HQ, knowing that maybe you, you are supposed to do this, you have some things to do, you go in, but what if the enemies change their plans and you can't see, you don't know what's happening and only HQ can see because they have intel, they have satellites to see, to show you what's going on, they can feed back to you and then you can adjust accordingly. We need to have connection with our commander-in-chief, Jesus Christ, so that we can live a fruitful life, a victorious life. Whether you and I, I like it or not, you and I are soldiers in God's kingdom. The day you and I became Christians, the day you and I placed our faith in God, the day you and I became friends with God, is the day you and I became enemies with Satan and he is all out to get you away from God, to distract you, to help you to live a defeated life, to cause, not, to, to cause you to live a defeated life. And so, it's so important for us to set aside time to have margin for God. Moving on, if we don't teach our kids to have margin and to be still, they don't see us doing it, we are setting them up for a very challenging life because they will just read the Bible for reading's sake and they won't get to hear God, they will ask questions, they will pray, yes, they will come to church, but they don't have a deep personal relationship with God, they don't hear God speak to them. And that's when they can lose faith and they can go far from God, even leave their faith, because it's only a one way. It seems like a one way, but they haven't learned to hear God because they are not still. And so if you care for your own spiritual life, if you care for your children's spiritual life, we need to have margin. Number two, it's good to have downtime, right? Nobody can be all highly strung all the time. We need to keep our downtime purposeful, using our, our downtime well to rest, to exercise, to, to be quiet, to be alone with God, to pray, to reflect, to strategize, to plan. All this is important. Because if we don't plan and strategize and, and lock certain things down, then other things that 
are urgent will crop up and steal the, the time from the important things in our life. So we need to keep our downtime purposeful. If it's sleep time, we sleep. Don't sleep. You know, we all have this habit. Sleep time, we look at the phone, right? In the early days, what did you do when you were eating breakfast? We would read the cereal box. Those of you who eat cereal, remember? I used to read the cereal box. Now, sometimes when I, when I, when I uh, have breakfast, I'm listening to something. And that can steal my time. When you go to the toilet, those days, you bring newspapers. Today, you have your phone. How many of you still bring your newspapers? No, no need to show your hands, you know? So, our life has changed with devices, so we need to, again, be careful to keep our downtime purposeful. If we, if we fill our downtime with media, with TV, with Netflix, etc., etc., it's not really purposeful. We could be reading a book. We could be thinking about what we want to do the next few days, praying about it, talking with our family, interacting so that we can have something more solid, purposeful life, right? Rather than just wasting our time away. Granted, we do need downtime that is just blank, you know? Because we always hear the joke where... Uh, a man can sit in a room and just zone out for 15 minutes and a woman asks, the, the wife asks the husband, what are you thinking? The man says nothing. It's true, you know. Sometimes the man can be thinking of nothing, just zone out. We need, some of us need that kind of time, right? But we cannot zone out because, which leads to my second point, the, there's a danger in purposeless downtime. In 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 1, you know, let me read to you. In the spring, at the time when kings go to war, David sent Joab out with the king's men and the whole army of Israel. They destroyed the Ammonites, besieged uh, Rabbath, but David remained in Jerusalem. When kings go off to war, it tells us that in that time, where kings usually lead their armies to war. They may not be the ones actually fighting, but they will lead. They will be there to challenge the people, to challenge their army, to remind them, to strategize, right? He was back in, his, in Jerusalem. He was chilling. And what did he do with his downtime? He wasn't doing anything. He was supposed to be somewhere else. He didn't use his time purposefully. If he was praying, good. But he was chilling, looking out the window. And we all know, he saw a woman bathing and that led to his downfall. If he was sick, that's okay, right? But no, the Bible intentionally, God put it there. When kings go to war, David remained in Jerusalem. And so, that tells us that we need to have purposeful downtime. Where things need to be done, we need to do it. Otherwise, we can fall into sin so easily. Just like David, when he was idle, it led to his sin against God, against Bathsheba, and against Uriah. Margin is important. Number three, this, this point, I, I remember Pastor Koan, uh, when, I was, when I first came in to, to serve Pastor Koan said this to me. He said, keep your accounts short. What does that mean? Does that, it doesn't mean nothing to do with money. It just means that, you know, in our daily interaction with people, our family members, our colleagues, etc., we may step on each other's toes. We may get upset with one another. We may disagree with one another. But it's so important to keep our accounts short because those dramas... In our life, you all watch Korean drama, right? It can go on for many series. Chinese drama, uh, Bollywood can go on for hundreds of series because the drama continues. Actually, you just need someone to forgive, someone to let go, someone to say, I'm sorry, and to offer forgiveness, and the drama stops. Amen? But it's so entertaining to watch 
but not entertaining to live. Is it? And so, if you really want to serve God, if you're serious about living a healthy Christian life, a victorious Christian life, we need to keep our accounts short. If I'm angry with someone, have a sit down and talk to the person. Pray about it. Ask God to forgive. Or if I'm the one who offended, then I ask for forgiveness. Keep the account short. Then, those drama won't steal your margin because if you're upset, guess what? You're going to stay up all night running through those things in your mind, what the person said, what the person did. And that steals your margin. Right? So, we need to be careful to talk through conflicts, to forgive, to seek forgiveness, to settle, to move on. Next one, of course, is delegate. In Exodus chapter 18, verse 21 to 23, very familiar passage where Jethro visited Moses and found that Moses was so busy doing so many things that there was a long queue of people waiting to see him for him to decide this and that amongst their disputes. And so Jethro told him in verse 21, you know, he says, you need to, uh, let, me, let me quickly read to you. Moreover, you shall select men from all the uh, people, able men, such, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, uh, and place such over them to be rulers of hundreds, of, of thousands, of hundreds, of fifties and tens. Then let them judge the people at all times. Then it will be that every great matter, uh, then it will be that every great matter they will bring to you. For every small matter they themselves shall judge. It will be easier for you, for they will bear the burden with you. If you do this and God so commands you, then you will be able to endure, and all the people will also have their place in peace. You know? So it's important for us to delegate as much as possible. But there's a danger. Huh? Don't delegate to the point that you have nothing to do because then it's not fair to the people around us, right? So easy, delegate. In the name of delegation, wow, I give you this, I give you this, I give you that. I just sit down and say, good job. I think that's not right too. But it is good for us to talk to someone and a few people about our schedule. Just like Jethro came in to uh, visit and he spoke into Moses' life. We need to have people who can speak into our life. So we need to be honest with a few people who are close to us and share with them our schedule. What goes on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, then, then ask them and say, do you think that's okay, that's too much, too little? You know, and have a discussion. I think that will be a good discussion to have in cell group. Moving on. Oh, let me finish with this. By delegating, we will protect our sanity and longevity. It will also encourage others to, to rise up and take some responsibility. Okay? As I said, it doesn't mean that we should take that as a license to tai chi everything. Famous word, right? We tai chi everything to everybody and then we shake legs. So, we should avoid having no margins where we have so little time to rest, to reflect, to give thanks to God, to be grateful to God, so little time for our family to be still and know that He is God. On the other hand, having too much margin is also dangerous because we become idle and lazy and we are not living a fruitful life for God because there are many needs in the kingdom of God, in the church and outside the church as well. Many people who need Jesus, non-Christians, need Jesus. The church need more of Jesus. And if it is not part of our life purpose to help reconcile men back to God, then we are off target. So I urge us, as we are still at the beginning of the year, to examine our lives honestly with your children, with your spouse, with some close Christian friends, to see if you have too little margin or you have too much margin. It's important to have a healthy margin. And that's slightly different for everybody. All right? So I urge you to do that so that at the end of the year, we can look back and say, I have used my time well for God. Yeah? I just want to add this. You know, for, for, 
some of us, we may have a bit more margin. Um, consider availing yourself to serve. I know that it will add a little bit more stress to your life. You have to come for practice or, or you have to do certain things. But if we are not serving, not doing anything in church, I urge you to do so because when you don't do something, somebody else has to do it and that somebody else may be already doing two or three things and you will add to the stress. And can we see someone else struggling and we sit back and relax? I think we can't, right? If we see that in our own families, we will teach our children, you know, you need to take some responsibility, a boy. Right? You see mommy, daddy, do this, do this, do this. You also need to take the rubbish, wash the dishes, etc., etc. If we can teach that to our children, we can do the same in the house of God. Allow me to, to end with this story. There was a lady who, who told the husband, I'm scared for the calendar. You know the calendar. The husband asked, why? She grinned and she replied, because its days are numbered. It's a joke, huh? in case you don't get it. <laughs> scared for the calendar because the days are numbered. Well, that is funny. You're supposed to laugh. A bit delayed, but not bad. <laughs> well, that is funny, but it's also very true for us that our days are numbered. And in the blink of an eye, I'm 45 years old. In my mind, I feel like I'm 30 years old, but my body tells me I'm not so young anymore. Through the stresses of life, I look 50 perhaps, with my hair, hair cut short, maybe a bit younger. Joelle is already six years old. She just lost, lost her, her, her second tooth, just dropped out two days ago. Time flies. We get older so fast. And the older we get, time seems to fly faster. True or not? Yeah? If you look back, wow. Time has passed. Children are growing up so fast. And the older we get, the more we realize that our time is short and we want to live, I hope we want to live our lives and make the time we have left count. You know, in Psalms 90 verse 12, it says, prayer from Moses, he says, so teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Why is it that when we number our days, we gain a heart of wisdom? See, when we have the right perspective of how much time we have, how short our life is, how brief our life is. The Bible describes that it's like the mist. It just goes like the flower. just dies very fast. Then we will live careful lives. Hopefully, God will give us that wisdom that when we realize that our time is so short, we will live carefully, making the most of every opportunity. The Psalm 90 verse 12 describe your life? I hope so. I hope that that is our prayer. Young people and more mature people, that we should live our lives knowing that our days are numbered. And someone once said, each time after a bell rang, he said to his friend, that marks an hour, another hour that I have to give account to. You know? Remember, we have to give an account to God one day for our time. So dear JBC, let's make room, let's make margin in our life so that we can live fruitful lives and reaching lives for the glory of God. Amen? And I invite the worship team to come up. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that Lord, you set forth this Sabbath, this rest time, this time that we can have margin from the busyness of work. I pray that God, you would help us to make use of that time, to reflect on our life so that, Lord, if we have too much to do, that we will cut down. If we have too little, that we will take some responsibilities up so that we can be fruitful for your kingdom, so that we can live and bring glory to you. Lord, help us to seize 
every opportunity that comes according to your time, Lord, so that, Lord, we will, we will not be idle, but we will live fruitful lives. So we commit ourselves to you. I pray that, God, as we reflect on our lives, on our schedules, on our, the margins that we have, Lord, help us to make the necessary alignments so that, Lord, our life can truly be a blessing to those within our family and those outside our family and also for those in church. So we thank you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Church, I think Pastor Daniel's message is pretty profound. I mean, to me personally, it hits hard. Although it's simple, I mean, it's all common sense perhaps to some of you. But I think many of us live a life on the edge. Yeah, we, we live our lives like living on the edge, some of us here. Yeah. And it's all about subtraction and addition. Uh, yeah? You give up something in order to gain another. And I hope that this, this message gives us a defining moment today and to be serious about our life on earth. Because we only have one lifetime to get it right. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah? Uh, after this, you know, we are fade away. And you know, our brothers and sisters who have gone before us, some of them have lived a full life. And we have heard many good great testimonies about how they have lived their life. What about us today, this morning? So let us really, as we do this response, shall we rise, by the way? Yeah. Let's just reflect on this and let this be a defining moment and make it personal to each of us. Only one lifetime. And we have only one life to make it right. You know, whether it's all about devoting our life and time to serving the Lord, help someone or make our life count. So in whatever capacity today, I believe that the Holy Spirit is ministering right now. So let's just sing this song as we begin. Very, um, maybe we have not sung this song for a long time, but I think it's very impactful. Yeah. 
life, you want to find some margin. And you need help. You can't do it on your own. You need prayer. Perhaps you have other needs. Certain things in your life have caused you to, to be disconnected from God. Today, you, you want to come back. I urge you to come forward as we sing again. Come forward so that we can pray with you. This is a safe place. You know, we, we care about your health, your relationship, your walk with God. We want, to, we want you to grow. We don't want you to live in, in, in stress, in duress. So come forward and the ministry team will pray with you. We sing again. Let's sing verse 2. Take it from that. No one could ever. Take your place I want to love You all of my days I want to live To be your delight That's only one lifetime To do it right Only one lifetime Only one lifetime Father needs, please come forward. The team will still pray with you. Let me close in prayer. Father, we thank you that, Lord, you hold all things in your hands. You hold our life in your hands, Lord. And we want to thank you for this reminder, Lord, that we need to live unhurried lives before you so that we have time to, to reflect on your goodness, and your faithfulness, that we may continue to depend on you, Lord, as we reflect, Lord. So I pray, God, that as we go forth from here, help us to live on your time, not on our time, not on the time of the world, but really to be on time with you, O oh God. So we commit our week to you and pray that, God, you will bring opportunities into our lives, that as you bring those opportunities into our lives to minister, to bless, to touch, help us to seize those opportunities, Lord. Thank you. We pray all this in Jesus' and mighty name. Amen. God bless you.